This is Norm Violette, who is the chief executive officer of Washington Laboratories. Norm. How are you, Bill? Uh, what are we going to be looking at here? I'll get out of your way so you can explain it. What we have here is a typical personal computer setup. We have the CPU, the keyboard, and the printer, and these can, of course, the monitor. And what we have here is a radiation problem. Where, and this radiation, of course, is in the radio frequency range. It can interfere with radio and TV reception. And this is the turntable that we use to measure the directivity of that radiation to catch the maximum level. Of course, now this radiation has to be suppressed by regulation, as we mentioned earlier today, by the FCC and the international and the international level. What we will do now, Bill, is turn the table so that the emission level of highest intensity will be facing the antenna. And you notice now, Bill, with the table in this position, we notice that the spectrum analyzer indicates the maximum level of radiation. It turns out that the problem in this case is this particular cable. And you notice as I move this cable up and down or move my hand along, it, along the cable, that the level of emission seems to change, showing the sensitivity of that emission to this cable. In this case, Bill, as I mentioned, this cable is the problem area. And as we remove the connector from the computer, and as we pull back the case, the plastic case on this connector, you notice that very small wire, which is approximately three inches long, that is the method used to ground the cable shield to the metal connector, which then goes to the frame of the computer. And the problem is that very thin wire, its impedance is much too high at high frequencies, thereby not properly grounding the cable shield, and it looks like, a, like an antenna. And for the sake of numbers, all you need is about something of the order of 10 microamperes of current falling on that shield to put you out of spec with the FCC limits. So how are we going to fix it? Well, what we will show here is the removal of this particular cable. And then what we will do is replace that cable with this modified cable. It is the same as the first one, except for this modification at the connector. What we have done, if you notice the skinny wire that we had before, now we have a foil connected between the connector metal part, and also the shield of the cable. And what that does, it gives us a low impedance connection between the shield and the ground. What that does, of course, is reduce the radio frequency voltage along the, sh along the cable, and thereby the emissions go down, as you will note, in well, the spectrum analyzer. Let's plug it in and let's see if that works. Now, once again, uh, as we were showing you the plug, it, it is disassembled for the uh, interest of saving time and also to show you the interior of it. But that obviously is not the way the cable would normally be. Well, normally we'd have a plastic plug over this particular assembly, which does absolutely nothing in terms of shielding. So having it off doesn't really matter. OK, it's connected up now. Now let's take a look. Now we take a look at the spectrum analyzer. And you notice that we have reduced our emission considerably just by this one particular fix. At this point, Bill, we want to demonstrate what a well-designed cable can do. We will remove our second cable, which was an improvement over the first cable. But you notice this particular cable has two solid back shell connectors. And in this particular design, the cable shield makes contact around the entire perimeter. 360 degree contact with a back shell connector. Now let's connect this cable in, into our system. And you now notice on the spectrum analyzer that the emissions that we saw before have virtually disappeared. Now there is another way that we can fix cable radiation, and it's using one of these blocks. This is called a ferrite block. Now, if we take this ferrite block, and we will just show its installation. Now, the ferrite block has a plastic case to hold it in position. Now, I will take this ferrite block and install it on this cable in this manner. 
Simply clips around it. Simply clips around the cable. And by doing this, if we have the proper ferrite at the proper frequency, then it will reduce the emissions. That is just another alternative fix to the proper grounding of the cable sheet.